Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Francesco and what I do in these videos is break down productivity tips, tools and techniques to help you move forward with your productivity. Oh, this new crazy mother... In this session what I wanted to do is run over premium and this is something that comes up a lot especially in productivity apps. When you're using productivity apps, naturally what happens is you get pushed towards an experience that is, you know, from freemium to premium, more valued or more kind of useful for you guys to use when enhancing your kind of productivity organization and things like that. So what I want to do is I'll go over four little tips when you're considering to use premium um, and considering to take the payment over to premium because I think that's valuable because a lot of people, um, you know, when they go on an application, they get so, you know, overwhelmed by the experience that they automatically go premium or that they don't and don't actually understand the full functionality of the app. So I'm just going to run over those four tips for you just so that you can, you know, apply them to all of the applications you're currently using or apply them to any future applications that you use. The number one thing to consider is storage. And this is something that comes up a lot of the time. Those kind of applications that you use that, you know, you need to continually be putting in things, applications like Evernote, Wunderlist, Todoist, and many more different things like that, where you're adding big files or you're adding big documents or you're continually making a note list that, you know, over time builds up to this kind of large attachment center. Um, those apps tend to cap you off at the limit. So, you know, 100 megabytes or, or even one gigabyte a month or that kind of process there. So it's important that you understand how your usage can apply to when you're getting premium. So if you're using the application to that limit, to the full limit of that and over it, then that's something to consider. If you're using that application and you understand over the next coming months that you are going to be growing the usage of that application. So for example, if you're using Evernote Freemium, for example, and you've just started using it, you're only putting 100 in, but you know next month and the month after that and the month after that, you're going to be putting in huge files or you're going to be putting in really big documents, anything really, and you understand that that's going to be something for you down the line, then that's something to consider when going premium. What your future predictions are going to be and how you're going to grow exponentially with the application. Two to consider is functionality. And a lot of apps, what they do is they hide some of the functionality within the premium model. And this is something that Todoist does and Wunderlist does quite commonly. Uh, they attach a unlimited usage to the functionality of the app. So for example, Wunderlist actually charge in the premium. So if you're on freemium, you're allowed to have a few subtasks, but in premium, you have unlimited usage of the subtask feature. This is something very common as well in Todoist. They have the reminders feature specifically in premium. And obviously that's very natural for them to do that. But when you're using it, you've got to consider whether this is a feature, that feature is something that you're going to be using or that could really enhance your productivity um, to make up the ROI of that going premium for that application. That's something to massively consider thing is whether the app has advertising and a lot of the time some of these apps I remember very in the early days I haven't seen it commonly in the new applications but it's something that if an app has lots of ads and you end up because of the great marketing or great banner ads that they do end up getting distracted which is very ironic in an application it's something to consider here's some great examples of some ads inside productivity apps So it's something to consider. Um, and obviously if you're getting distracted more than you are becoming refined, maybe that's something to consider when going premium. And the fourth thing is third party integrations. And this is something that a lot of apps are doing these days. They're focusing on trying to be more valuable by connecting to other applications. We've seen Trello, we've seen Evernote, we've seen Zapier do this recently, where they've kind of cordoned off their integrations based on, just simply based on their premium model being like available. So for example, there's a ton of channels on Zapier um, that actually you're not allowed to connect to.
If you're a user that wants to get access to those channels, you're going to have to go premium. But as long as you consider whether that integration itself and the strength of that integration will actually pay back in the future. And that's something to bring everything together. As long as you understand that when you're going premium, that there's an ROI attached to that specific monetary purchase. So for example, uh, for myself, I pay the Evernote premium feature. And this is something I pay £35 a year on. And as I understand that, if I'm using Evernote to organize myself, and over the year it saves me or makes me above £35, then that's the reason I'm going to be going into that kind of application. It's very similar to if you go to a coffee shop and you're going to do work, then you've got to understand, I guess, in the long run, that if you pay for that three two pound coffee does that two pound coffee pay back while you're doing those hour of emails for example it's just something to consider when thinking of going premium a lot of the time you know the coffee example is bad because you know these productivity apps can charge you anywhere between 10 pound to 100 pound across the year so it's something to think very holistically about that was a really quick video about how you guys can consider using premium um, and actually applying these rules for any applications you've got now or any applications that you're looking to get in the future. Uh, and these rules apply to all of those. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate all the messages you've sent me recently, especially in YouTube comments, uh, on Reddit, and also on the Medium article that I pushed out last week, which reached over like 350 recommendations on Medium which I was really happy at. Now, that was actually one of my year goals, which was really nice to achieve. So I want to thank everyone for pushing that one out as well. I really appreciate all the support recently. I've just passed 1,700 subscribers and everything seems to be going up from here. So I'm really going to be pushing out some great videos soon and hopefully adding as much value as I can to you. So thank you very much, everyone. Make sure to have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very soon. Cheers.